early in the 80s, uh, Harriet Malinowitz kind of spearheaded a, how can I put this, uh, Harriet Malinowitz spearheaded a, a drive to get four C's not to go to any cities uh, where GL, there were anti-GLBTQ laws uh, on the books uh, or where those were enforced. The um, caucus put together the res resolution that we would not um, hold the convention in any cities that had anti-sodomy laws. So because there were so many places where our members were actually illegal for going there. Um, and so that was passed and that was probably one of the biggest things that the caucus had done at that point. Since then, and I think that's perhaps one of the, the main struggles that was kind of fought against with four C's. Uh, I think now the queer caucus always just uh, continues to make the organization question some of its policies uh, and some of the things that it has not said yet uh, regarding GLBTQ issues. To look at how each of our um, caucuses work together, I really, um, I feel like we're in these little silos right now and I think they're important and I think we've made the rest of the um, conference very aware of our issues, but we're not working together, I think, in ways that would be so productive and allow us to make some big changes about how the conference runs, how the um, four C's is put together, who's on the executive board, and those sorts of things. I think the interaction with other caucuses, uh, this is not just a problem with the queer caucuses and other caucuses, uh, but I think it's just a in some ways an organizational and perhaps an administrative problem that I think exists for the special interest groups in general because they all meet at the same time and logistically maybe it has to be that way. Uh, you know, those people who may uh, identify with, with different special interest groups uh, can only really attend one at a time. And I think that's just a structural problem and an administrative problem that uh, we haven't quite figured out. And I think really the problem is that, you know, in a four-day conference, there's just never enough time so that all things can be done. I think one of the barriers to us being able to work together are that most of the special interest groups um, meet at the same time. So if you're interested in, say, going to Latino Caucus and the Disability Caucus, you can't. We have people who would like to go to the Queer Caucus and the Disability Caucus, and they can't do that. So they, they're forced to make a choice about their identity, as if people's identity only had one, one facet to it. And I think from what we know about identity, most people have multiple identities. Um, and those multiple identities really should add to what the conference does about diversity um, and what the whole organization does about diversity. I'm also, we've also talked a good bit with people from other caucuses about querying the conference in a way that presentations are done differently, um, that they're more interactive, that we actually um, combine things so that there aren't like queer panels and Latina panels and that we actually kind of look for um, where we overlap and put panels together that way so you have a queer perspective and a Latina um, perspective and an African American perspective on the same panels. I think that the Queer Caucus has uh, addressed issues of gender uh, as, as those issues have developed. Uh, I think at the beginning of the Queer Caucus uh, there was originally just one chair. That was later addressed when uh, the caucus decided to have uh, multiple chairs um, and one always being a lesbian who was part of the group and the other being a gay man. I think at this point the uh, queer caucus needs to perhaps revisit that once again since uh, we are since really part of queer theory is uh, revisiting the idea of gender and gender, gender identification, uh, particularly in issues of transgenderism. So we may need to allow that to uh, 
evolve yet once again and construct our group accordingly. I was nominated to be chair of the caucus and I accepted it. Um, and recently, most of the people who show up for the caucus meeting have been graduate students and they haven't really felt able to take over, so I'm now doing another two-year term. I'm hoping to sort of mentor someone to then, because I think you need to have changes. I don't think it's a good idea for the same people to be doing this over and over again. Um, but I think with the task force now, that will have a lot of work. We've asked caucus members to become involved in collecting data that the task force needs. And I think that involvement will make them feel more part of things, and I think someone will be more willing then to step up. In some ways, you know, the Queer Caucus is very much like the other caucuses and that we're working toward professionalism. We are working to highlight um, the sorts of work we do, the research that we do, the kinds of teaching that we do. We're different in that the other caucuses are um, based on race, um, gender, um, and those things are, of course, easier to point out. There are many people that believe that, as a lesbian, that I'm taken care of under gender, but that's really not true. Um, the, the issues are very different for me than they are for straight women. And so, and also I think, you know, there has been, in the past and even now, a lot of resistance to um, queer people and queer faculty and queer students. I mean, there are many places now where people are still closeted as teachers, especially in some public school systems, um, because they will be fired if it's found out that they're queer. And um, so I think those kinds of things make it difficult for us to have visibility, because for some people having visibility is not safe. In many places, we don't even have laws that protect us. I mean, up until two years ago, um, UCF could have fired me if they wanted to, because I did not. We did not have sexual orientation in our anti-discrimination clause. I would like for the Queer Caucus every year to, at, for the conference, to put in a featured session. I think that'd be really important. I would like to do. Um, more with us sharing teaching practices. So I'm hoping that uh, we can again have workshops every, every conference as well, but also be able to collect best teaching practices on our website that other people can go to and download and use. Um, I would like to be able to share our scholarship, but also our creative work. Um, I remember at one conference a faculty person asking me, well, I would have people read poetry by queer authors, but I can't find any. And so I just immediately gave her this long list. Um, and even in some anthologies, you know, they'll have a queer author, but they won't mention that. They'll, you know, they mention if someone's um, African American or Latino or Chicana, but they don't say that this is a lesbian writer. And so people don't know. Um, and I think I would like to get more of that out. We also have, in, in the seas, we have a, lots of queer um, fiction and writers and poets. And it would be nice to get their work out there as well. The kind of changes that I would like to see for Four Seas in relationship to the Queer Caucus is really a uh, reevaluation, one, of perhaps some of the policies uh, that are put in place and the con and the ways that the that research and young scholars are funded uh, to attend the conference uh, I'd really like to see perhaps some scholarships or some travel funds go to uh, emerging GLPTQ scholars uh, so that they know that they're the kinds of scholarship and interest that they have in the academic world are supported by this large uh, flagship organization um, and I think also we just after some more research we really need to think as an organization how GLBTQ uh, faculty and students are represented at different institutions that are members of the organization um, and how they get a fair shake as in the same way that every student uh, should receive the same kinds of equal opportunity education. I would like for younger scholars to, to 
feel safe to do the work that they do, to be themselves. I mean, my first tenure track job, I was totally closeted. Um, where I am now, I'm not closeted, but I wasn't there a month before I was called into the chair's office and asked not to tell the graduate students that I was a lesbian because I made them uncomfortable. Um, and there were many, many things like that happened. And I don't want that to happen anymore. What difference does it make if they know that I'm a lesbian or not? It shouldn't make a difference. 